Hello, I'm Tim Kyle. I'm a portrait photographer. I'm going to be going over the Light YH700 flash unit. Um, this is for Canon, uh, the Canon mount. Um, you know, I don't know a whole lot about this company. I don't know a whole lot about any of the other products that they make. So I've used this uh, flash over the last couple weeks, uh, you know, events, weddings, around the house, at portraits. Uh, both on camera and off camera and overall I think this is a great product it's uh, priced in the 80 to 90 dollar range um, very very competitive pricing when you compare this to Canon's 580 EX2 which kind of is a similar product to this one um, so just overall just the the specs you can go online and look at all the specs you can look at other videos and get all the the detail stuff but just kind of the uh, the overall specs of this unit it does do high-speed sync so that's a huge game changer for someone like me. I use high speed sync all the time. Uh, it does do TTL. Um, and uh, you'll see that this flash unit right here is mounted to a YN Yongnuo 622 receiver, transceiver, um, and it is compatible. So when you have one mounted off camera um, with one of these guys, it will work. The high speed sync and the TTL does work. So that's something that I think a lot of people are gonna be interested in. Um, you know, so uh, when, when you look at the front of the unit, um, it has a very simple on-off switch. I know a lot of cameras, they, may, they make you do the hold switch on and off. So that can, that can be good and bad. You don't want it turning on in your bag. You don't want it turning off on accident. But it's a real sim simple switch. Using the unit is very easy. It's very, very simple. All the buttons are easy to press, easy to understand. Um, it does have a, a good audio alert system. So, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in fresh batteries. These other batteries, I'm actually not sure how fresh they are. These batteries came uh, right off of the uh, charger. They're actually still warm. I'm using the Inaloops. Um, highly recommend using Inaloops for the capacity and the refresh times. Um, so when I look at this, it, it, it clearly marks the plus and minus as you look into the unit. And it's just every other one. So once you just kind of figure that out, it's pretty easy. Um, I will say loading this is not hard at all. They make it nice and simple. The, the, the door uh, closes over and um, uh, you have to put some pressure on it as, as you close it. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't think this is the best door ever, but it's not terrible. Um, I haven't had any issues with it and I don't see it breaking too easily. So just something to, to look at. I'll get a close up on that. And I've got this at one-to-one -one power right now, and what I basically want to do is give it a test shot so you guys can see how long it takes to recharge. And so one, one thing I did notice, when you fire it at full power, it, it has a red in indication that's supposed to tell you when it's ready. The beep happens a pretty good amount of time after the red dot illuminates. So if you look, it's green, then it switches to red, and then it beeps. So I don't know which is correct, the, the beep or the red illumination light. So it's kind of interesting. Um, other than that, I'll show you guys a few photos that I've been using this. It works great off camera. It wor works great on camera for the uh, bounce flash. Um, it seems to be powerful, j just as powerful as the Canon or, uh, you know, larger flashes, the flagship flashes like the 600. I'm holding a Canon 600 in my hand right now. So you get an idea of the size. Let's actually take it off of uh, this so you can get an idea of the size comparison. They are about the same. I mean, I would say the upper light is maybe just slightly smaller by like three millimeters. Um, Weight-wise, they're about the same. It's a very light flash. Construction is pretty good. It does not have the buttons on the side that um, lock the flash. So you you can freely move this any way that you want. Um, and, it, and it holds itself pretty well. Uh, one thing that is different about it is it not only does the, the, the normal direct flash uh, or orientation, but it, it can actually tilt down slightly. Um, I don't ever do use direct flash, but um, when you're mounting it in an umbrella and you know you want to, if you're mounting it really close to a modifier or something like that, and you want it to, to angle down just slightly, that could be useful. So my biggest complaint with this flash may seem like a kind of a small thing to most people, 
is it does not allow you to angle the flash behind and to the left at a 45. So you can take the flash and you can angle it this direction, but you cannot move it past 90 degrees on the left side. So I basically cannot use this on camera as a bounce flash at weddings or events because I'm constantly changing my flash orientation to to you know work with whatever I'm shooting. So if I'm shooting a subject over here and I want to bounce off the wall over here to give them light to light their face, I would do that. And if they're standing over here and I have a wall behind me, I would do the same. Now I can't. Now I have to hit the wall way over there or I have to hit directly above, but I can't put it back to the left of me. So th this is a no-go for me as far as on-camera flash. However, this thing does ETTL, it does high-speed sync. I can pair these with other flashes and umbrellas, and it's a great backup flash. It, you know, if you already have a couple flagship fla flashes and you want to uh, do product photography or something else where you want four or five flashes and you can't spend $400 per flash for the 580EX or you don't want to buy a 600 um, and you don't need, you know, four 600s, you need something like this, a powerful flash that, that does the job. This is really going to be your guy. Uh, other than that, I haven't had any issues with it. Um, very simple, uh, you know, um, does have the locking mechanism, which is similar to Young Nuo brand locking mechanisms, where the uh, Canon version, you know, has the snap. So some people like the snap, some people don't. Um, this has the lock. The cool thing about using off-camera flashes with a lock is when you cinch this guy down, you know that it's not going anywhere. It's going to be really, really, really tight. And you can invert these guys and do all kinds of stuff um, and not have to use a, a cold shoe that, you know, tightens it. You know, it'll work right out of the gate. Um, Canon's, you know, has, has, has the lock, which is quick, fast, and easy, but, um, you know, ha has its pros and cons. When you're using it with the YN622, for example, I, I prefer to have this lock because, man, can you really tighten that thing down and it's not going anywhere. Um, another thing about this guy, it does have the, the standard, um, you know, the sync cord, but it also has the uh, spots so that you can use battery packs. And this thing works with, um, you know, just the standard battery packs that Canon makes. This right here happens to be a Yong Nuo SF-18. You put eight double A's in this guy to help you with your refresh time and uh, battery types. Um, so the last thing that I'll say is I was really impressed. I didn't... I'm surprised I even noticed this, is if you look at the bottom of these little uh, cold shoe mount uh, dealies, um, which you can use to mount your flash on a stand, so it has the quarter thread, so you can just screw onto a stand, or you can put it on the table and use off the ground. The one that came with the flash unit has a metal threading, which is huge. What One of the things that they don't tell you is that if you use these plastic threads over and over and over again, eventually you'll uh, mess up the threads and it will no longer stay on there and you'll kind of feel like it's in there and it'll just come loose. So o over time, plastic will wear out, especially when you're, when you're tightening plastic down on metal, you're going to wear these threads out. So they actually gave you a metal threaded uh, plastic, you know, cold shoe mount, which is awesome. Um, and the other thing about this, this, this cold shoe mount, if you've ever, in fact, I need to loosen this before I try to pull it out. If you've ever used a normal one, they have this kind of locking mechanism that locks the uh, tabs in. And, and when you lock it in there, it, it's not going to come out. You have to kind of bend it down to get it out. And I just don't think that's good for your hot shoe. I think over time, doing that over and over and over again is just not great. And you're having to kind of torque your uh, trigger or your flash unit like that. The one that they have... Um, goes on and I feel like um, because you have this tightening thing down like this you don't need that thing it's not it's not going to go anywhere so when you want them just firing off flash units firing off flashes when you want to remove it it just slides right out so I feel like over time this is better for your flashes uh, otherwise, great, great product. Um, there are a lot of flashes on the market right now in this price range. So I'm curious to see how this, this company is going to do, how, how they're going to differentiate themselves. Um, nothing extremely game changing, just a, a lot of, of good stuff. The high speed sync, the TTL, 
the high guide number, the, the capacity, um, and just a, a nice little flash unit for about 89, 90, 90 bucks. I think it was 90 bucks last night I checked, 89, 99. So anyways, I uh, ho hope this was useful. Uh, you guys have a great week.